Good morning. I'm County Executive George Latimer, and uh, I'm pleased to be here uh, at uh, Hastings Tea Room along with my friends and colleagues, Assemblywoman Amy Paulin, who represents the 88th Assembly District here in Westchester County, with um, uh, Jim Maisano, who is our Director of Consumer Protection for Westchester County, and also with Linda Winston, who's the Executive Director of the Upstate New York Chapter of the Crohn's and Colitis Foundation. Now, we're not actually in Upstate New York, so Linda, we appreciate you coming down here to, no, to be with us. Inside joke about Upstate. Uh, but in all, we're here on a very serious point, and that is to uh, recognize the fact that Governor Cuomo signed into law a piece of legislation that, that took a lot of work to get done and Assemblywoman Paulin, who's known as one of the most effective uh, legislators uh, in, in the state capitol, was able to get through the Assembly, as well as influence uh, Senate uh, Health uh, Committee Chair Kemp Hannon to pass through the state Senate, and that is the Crohn's and Colitis Fairness Act. It's an issue I'm familiar with during my tenure in the state legislature, uh, and there was uh, a real learning curve that Amy uh, had to help uh, her colleagues in the state legislature go through to make this happen, and we're very happy that Governor Cuomo signed it. This state law will be implemented over the next few months, but we're here today to say that Westchester County, under the direction of our Department of Consumer Protection, and with the help of uh, all of our resources in the county government, intends to do whatever it takes to raise awareness of the new law among our local business owners and among our residents who suffer from various gastrointestinal conditions like Crohn's disease and ulcerative ulcerative colitis. Uh, for those who have these medical conditions, uh, it often requires immediate access to a restroom, wherever you may be. And uh, certainly when you're out in the community uh, at a various facility, uh, the, the past practice has been in those places that do not have officially public restrooms to deny access to a necessary uh, restroom, which is absolutely essential at that moment in time. You're accommodating an emergency and it's beyond the control of the individual. It's difficult to predict when it might happen, and it can be very embarrassing if there are reasonable options uh, for that option. So let's be clear about what the law doesn't do. It doesn't require business owners to make any physical changes to their existing employee-only restrooms. It doesn't require that business owners change their policies about the use of their employee-only restroom if there's another public restroom or other facility close at hand. And even if there is no other facility close by, the law does not require business owners to make their employee-only bathrooms available to the general public, except those who suffer from these specific set of medical conditions. This, war has, uh, this law has been crafted very carefully by Assemblywoman Paul and to try to deal with some of the objections of the business community and to be practically minded to help those who need the assistance without creating an undue burden on the businesses. What the law does do is it allows those who suffer from a gastrointestinal disease access to the restroom due to the emergencies that are caused by the disease. And to be able to enjoy the shops and the restaurants here in downtown White Plains is a vibrant local business community. Uh, it has lots of street traffic and you want to encourage that street traffic. It's very important for us. At the same time, allowing people who have an emergency situation that fall into this uh, situation access to what is otherwise an employee-only restroom in that emergency. It's not about convenience. There's nothing that's convenient about having Crohn's disease or, or ulcerative colitis. Uh, this is a question of compassion. So without any further conversation, the author of the bill, my friend, a person who, as I said already, has been a terrific legislator on issue after issue. She's been able to encapsulate an idea, frame it out in a well thought out law, and then have the persuasive powers to get it through the state legislature. Both houses get to the governor's desk and sign. Not an easy task. Uh, she is the uh, author of this bill, and I'm very happy that she's here to uh, discuss it. Assemblywoman Amy Paul. So first, I, I want to just say that we've really come full circle. Uh, you know, having uh, George Latimer and Jim Mazzano by my side here, uh, the original email for, uh, that prompted this bill was from a New Rochelle resident. I had to go back in our, and look in our, in our files, but it was a New Rochelle resident. And George may not remember this, but we had a discussion because the resident lived in my district. We split New Rochelle at the time. He was an assembly member. So we had agreed that I would uh, embark on this bill. Now that's going back quite a few years. It took, you know, as uh, the county executive said, you know, a while to convince our colleagues that it was the right thing to do. And the minute I put the bill in, 
uh, there were so many people that reached out to me that uh, had uh, that 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 had the problem that had the that had one of the diseases that we capture in the law, uh, and you know admitted that you know it is quite quite a difficult issue, specifically or more importantly even for for kids who. Uh, you know, don't always have control about their whereabouts, where they're going to be. They are dragged from one thing to another by parents, by schools, and, you know, and they are particularly, uh, uh, they don't have the control, therefore, not only of their whereabouts, but of their physical self. So it's, uh, and it's new to them, and, you know, and so it's, um, it's a terrible, terrible hardship and a problem that, you know, we really wanted to see addressed. Uh, the, um, you know, when we looked at it initially, we knew that or found out that uh, there were 14 other states that had already done a similar law. Uh, we essentially modeled it for New York, but it's very similar to those other states, so this is not unusual. Uh, we expect uh, that store owners and other places that have employee bathrooms are going to be happy about the compassion that they're now showing and be expected to show that compassion. So. We're very excited about having done this for so many people. Uh, you know, it's um, you know just it's close. It's close to me. I know so many individuals, good friends, who um, are are uh, inflicted with this problem. So you know, you know there was um, a young girl, Allie Bain, who started this uh, in Illinois. It was the first state to adopt this law, and she was a teenager at the time. And and you know we we've currently seen. Uh, the the uh, the power of the teenager, you know, recently with Parkland, and this was the power of one teenage girl, and she really changed the way we treat uh, with treat people with Crohn's and colitis. So you know, Allie Bain deserves to be mentioned again here because yet one more teenager really influenced uh, laws in our country, and now very proudly in New York. So with that. I am going to turn the mic over to uh, Jim Mazano, who will enforce the law, because the way we've designed it, uh, the, the Office of Consumer Protection is going to have the, the privilege of ensuring that uh, people get access. Thank you. Hello, everybody. Um, as Director of Consumer Protection, I'm thrilled to be here today. Um, and it, it is full circle. When I, when I started as a county legislator in my previous life, two people I work with are on bills with George Latimer, chairman of the Board of Legislators at the time, and Amy Paulin, an advocate at that time. Well, you can see she's still advocating and passing legislation, so great work, Amy. Um, and George and I are back together again, which has been really fun. There's no question that um, every single person can relate to this bill, because I don't know anyone who's ever not been in public and had an emergency and had to go to the bathroom. Imagine having a medical condition where this happens all the time. That's the wisdom of this bill. Um, uh, it, it, everybody's been in this situation, we understand it. It must be horrible for someone that has the medical condition. So our department, the Consumer Protection Department, is fully committed to enforcing this law. Uh, but more importantly than enforcing the law, right now we're going to be involved in public education. We're going to be working with the business community in Westchester and educating on this and working with them, because at the end of the day, all we want them to do is to comply with the law. We want everybody to be good citizens and good actors and work with the law and comply with the law. Um, so right now, our, because the law doesn't take effect till August, we'll be doing nothing but public education. And the good news about our office, consumer protection, for the first time, I, I, since now that George is the county executive and I'm the director, we're on social media. And some of the communication department people are here who helped us get on social media. We're on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, and we'll be promoting this law uh, and working with the business community through our social media uh, outlets. And then myself and my deputy director, John Gassione, who's here, will be work talking directly to the business community, educating them on what this law really says and what it's all about. Because um, at the end of the day, um, uh, we don't think this is going to be too hard of a change. We think most businesses will be able to adapt it, but they're going to have questions. So we'll work through that uh, with them. I uh, also want to point out that we have seasoned in, in, in inspectors at our office. People have been inspecting businesses in this county for a long time. They will be involved with us in our public education. Uh, so we're looking forward to enforcing this law. Ironically, it originally was going to be the health department in the first draft of the law. It got moved to consumer protection, and we think that's where it's belong, because our office is ready to be dedicated, work hard with the business community, work hard with the advocates, and make sure people who really need this help can get it in Westchester County as soon as possible. Thank you. 
And let me reintroduce Linda Winston, who's Executive Director of the Upstate New York Chapter of the Crohn's and Colitis Foundation. Linda, thank you for being with us here today. Thank you very much. <clears throat> this bill has been a culmination of many, many years of, as uh, Assemblywoman Poulin stated, uh, of reaching out and working with people, reaching out to our other chapters who had already had success in their states passing the bill. And as everyone knows, every state is different in the way they handle legislate, the legislative process. Every state has different laws. So we tweaked and we tweaked and we tweaked the bill until it went through. Uh, of course, Assemblywoman Poulin has been our champion for years and years and years now. And uh, she uh, helped us uh, bring the Senate in, into the mix. And with uh, S Senator Hanman, this year, uh, this past year, uh, we met in Albany. We, had, we have five chapters in New York State, and we had representation from all five chapters, patients and staff and volunteers that met with all of our own um, assembly people, senators, et cetera, and to, to educate them more because when the vote came up, we wanted it to pass this year, and it did. And uh, as a patient myself, I've been a patient for 45 years. And when I was younger, in my, I'd say, mid to late 20s, uh, that's when I was diagnosed. And at early on, I had a lot of problems with urgency. And to de best describe urgency and what it is, think of the worst case of stomach flu you've ever had, and you know what that feels like when you've gotta go. And that's the way it is for our patients all the time. And for us to be in a facility that doesn't allow you to use the restroom, it can be devastating. I had three instances while I was younger, and twice I was totally humiliated, de devastated, hysterical, because I was denied access to use a restroom and had an accident, and this is what happens. You, it's not like you can control it. You can't, when you've gotta go, you've gotta go. And this bill is gonna go a long way to helping our patients be able to even leave their homes. I have patients telling me, I don't even go shopping anymore because I'm always afraid I'm gonna have to go and not be able to get the access to do so. Well, now I can go back to those patients and tell them, and we have already started sharing, of course, uh, that they can feel comfortable going out. Um, the enactment, as I said, it's gonna bring, bring peace of mind to our patients and let them know that if they do indeed have to go, they can quietly ask. You know, they, they don't have to be embarrassed, nobody will embarrass them, and they can have that access. We definitely want to thank Assemblywoman Poulin. We want to thank, thank George Latimer and our Consumer Protection Board. And uh, you've got you to help our guys in Albany, too, in upstate New York, too. No problem. <laughs> and, uh, of course, thanking Governor Cuomo for s signing the bill in the first place. Thank you very much. Thank you, Linda. Mm -hmm. Thank you for being with us. Just a personal note, and we'll go to questions uh, as you may have them. Um, I was um, traveling uh, from Philadelphia to Washington 35 years ago with a business colleague, a person who worked uh, directly for me. And while we were on the train, uh, a certain amount of miles outside of Philadelphia. Uh, I did not know he had Crohn's disease and he had uh, a, a severe Crohn's attack at the time. And we were heading down for what was gonna be a festive event. It ultimately ended up with him being hospitalized when we got to Washington, D.C., in a very extreme set of circumstances. But it was the first time I saw directly what happens in an inconvenient moment on a, on a train. There was bathroom access, but you know there wasn't medical access that he needed at the time. And Having seen that, I never once doubted when the potential for this piece of legislation came along when it was first suggested about what the severity of the problem is when it happens and what our responsibility is to be compassionate and understanding to those, those people that suffer from this disease. And I think this is an example 
of, of the vast bureaucracy of government trying to respond to a need. It exists for a certain number of people out there, and it's right for us to do this. I'm, I'm confident that the business community of Westchester County uh, and, and Jim's involvement and, and our, our whole administration involvement in trying to make sure the business leaders of this county understand how this law is to be implemented, I think will help that individual when that individual is here. And of course, it, it gives them a comfort zone that in this state, and particularly in this county, that, that their need of the moment will be recognized and appreciated. So with that, we're open to any questions that you'd like to direct to Assemblywoman Amy Paulin, to uh, Director of Consumer Protection uh, Jim Masano, uh, or to Linda Winston with the Crohn's and Colitis Foundation. Sure. Can I add one thing? Yes, please, Jim. I just wanted to add one thing. If there's any business owners watching this event right now, and you have any questions on how to implement this law, how to comply with the law, just call our office. Just call the Westchester County Consumer Protection Office at 995-2155. That's 914-995. 2155, and we'll happily walk you through uh, the different details and aspects of the law. How, how will uh, businesses know who has the Crohn's disease? Will they be given a special card? Or yeah. Uh, we uh, struggled with that. You know, we didn't, we weren't sure um, uh, whether someone should get certified in some way, and we ultimately decided that uh, uh, they may not have the card on them you know, at a time, right, that they need it. So we didn't want to um, uh, tie the card to the person. Uh, we decided that it would be, um, um, that there would be public education. Uh, I mean, this is public education, right? So we decided, and I want to, actually, I wanted to step back and thank George and Jim for really embracing this, uh, because this is an opportunity to share with the public, with people who have uh, Crohn's and colitis, and it's an opportunity to, sh to tell businesses what they need to do. So I really appreciate this because the public awareness is really key. And so it's through public awareness and business owners, you know, might there be one or two people who come forward and say, I want to use the restroom? Well, there might, but it, that's okay too. You know, so, um, so through the foundation organizations that work with the patients, they'll learn about it, they'll know what to do, they'll go to the businesses. And we're also going to be sending a letter to all of the counties, and hopefully they'll follow Westchester's model and promote it so that all of the businesses throughout New York and all of the uh, people who are inflicted with Crohn's and colitis and other types of diseases that fall into this category will know about it. Other questions? We do expect to have a very vigorous uh, public face on this. Uh, Jim and I used to be in side-by-side -side legislative districts. He's committed to going to the Neurochelle Chamber of Commerce. I'm going to hit Larchmont and Mamaroneck, and by extension, we're going to reach all of those organizations around the county with our message. We want to make sure that we thank once again Hastings Tea Room, not only for hosting this particular event and perhaps messing up their uh, midday business, but also as an example of a business that understands what this need is and is, is perfectly happy to uh, comply with the law and to do it not because it's required, but because it is the compassionate right thing to do. And I think that's what we're going to see in implementation. Many to most businesses will have that response. So are there any other questions for us as a group? If not, you're welcome to have any individual questions with Linda, with uh, Assemblywoman Paul, and or with uh, Jim Masano. Thank you very much. Thank you.